Mia Allen character breakdown. Let's go over this. Um, I got to spend quite a few hours today playing both Mia and David and getting an idea of, on how to play them, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, I'll do David in the next video. Um, I figured I'd do Mia first because it seems like for whatever reason, she's the more popular of the two. I don't know if it's just because she's a more popular character, if people think that she's better than David, but regardless, I'm gonna go over her first to start with here. Um, let's go over her abilities first and talk about those and how I feel about them. Um, uncontrollable when activated, Mia cannot be possessed, but fear level increases and cannot be decreased. However, when the ability deactivates, her fear level drops according to how many evil units she killed while it was active. Um, I, I feel like you can't really talk about uncontrollable without mentioning fear leads to anger because they pretty much go hand in hand. Um, fear leads to anger is when Mia's fear level reaches a specific threshold, which is about 20%. It's this tiny little uh, thing on her fear bar. Uh, if I actually come over here, and go into my display capture. It kind of sucks, you can hardly see it, but you see down there in the bottom left, right there, where my nose is, um, she has a little number down there. It's right, it's right here, it's dark now, but that's what it is. Um, that indicates that she is benefiting from fear leads to anger, and the number will actually tell you uh, how much your damage is being increased by. Now, I wrongly assumed, and it's kind of funny because I never really thought to check how many points are in the fear bar, but I wrongly assumed that it was going to be 80%. Because it says the fear threshold is 20, I had assumed, oh, well, the fear bar has to be 100 when full, right? That means she gets an 80% increase, it, I would assume. She doesn't. At max fear, she gets a 40% increase. So it's not as good as I thought it was. It's still okay. Um, as far as this ability goes itself, it also provides a 20% damage increase. Um, this ability is not as good as I was hoping that it would be. Um, I think there's possibly potential to use it like defensively as opposed to using it offensively, like activating it to do extra damage and kill things. Um, I primarily used it offensively in testing. Um, I think that there is a possibility that you could build Mia like every other warrior and just go pure balance bar and then just use uncontrollable as nothing more than a defensive measure. Like you never activate it to actually deal excess damage. You just use it in order to protect yourself from getting possessed. <clears throat> um, using it as an offensive thing, it's kind of whatever. And the big downfall of this is that the point in the match where you absolutely would need this ability the most, where you would want to save this ability, is at the book, and it doesn't work at the book. <laughs> I mean, it does. Like, it, it will fear, fill up your fear meter if you activate this, but it only, when I tested it, I only got, like, a little above the 20% threshold to activate fear leads to anger, and... I think I got maybe five, six percent damage bonus from that before it started to tick down again, and it, it ended and ticked down again. So, uh, yeah, you get the twenty percent melee damage bonus and everything, but like, it, you know, fear's not really relevant at that stage. And the main purpose of this is to activate it, build your fear up, and then you, you know, get the increased damage from fear leads to anger as well so in the most crucial stage of the match where you'd want a lot of damage where you want to be able to chunk the boss down really quick so it can't kill the book her ability is basically neutralized so it's it's that's not great um it's still you still get the 20 percent melee damage bonus but um that's not much um blood rain blood rain man i just don't notice much from blood rain like it's only 10 percent. it feels like whenever i hit something it you know it, it doesn't stack like kelly's does um and it just feels like it, it just tickles people and that's in exchange for having to rely on heavy attacks and i'm it, i'm still questioning how good that is i i don't care what anyone says every time i 
mention anything about this. I have somebody in a comment or something who's like, you're wrong, man. Heavy attacks are great. I hate heavy attacks. I'm a heavy attack hater. I think heavy attacks are bad. I hate ha having to use them at all. I especially hate having to use them to maximize the potential of somebody's kit. Heavy attacks are garbage, dude. Uh, it takes longer to land, land the animation, which means you're going to be taking more hits on average because... You know, maybe a, a light attack would have finished the job, but you you went for a heavy and then they wound up getting a hit on you. You're going to get interrupted a lot. Uh, you're going to get hit before your heavy attack can land. That is absolutely just devastating to have that happen. And then when you're running at somebody, he, your character does that stupid little kick and your heavy attacks in general don't really lock on to the target that you're hitting not in the same way that light attacks do. So typically what happens, like when I'm playing somebody like Mia who relies so heavily on heavy attacks, I have to run at a character, run at an enemy, light open with a light that will lock on and kind of hit them and then start doing heavies. And it's even worse against like Plaguebringer because Plaguebringer's boss it, like is ranged and, and, and is floating around and it's really hard to stick with her. If you're just using heavies, you oftentimes have to mix in lights in order to actually lock on and stay with her as she's moving around. And so then you don't get as much of, benef of a benefit from Blood Rain. Um, so this seems not great. And then the last thing is Weapon Master Machete. Um, Weapon Master Machete is a 10% increase in my testing, which is okay. Um, it's 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 decent. I, I would say that you probably could pick up a machete, but I would honestly think um, that maybe using a big, slow, two-handed weapon is the way to go. That's one of the very few builds I didn't wind up getting the chance to test. But as far as what I did get the chance to test, this here, it was probably the best build that I used. Um, this one basically says, okay, so... She basically has three three abilities that go into damage. Really four, because this increases damage of machetes too. So all four of these increase your damage in some way. So let's say, okay, well, we want to do heavies to take advantage of Blood Rain. Um, we obviously want excess melee damage so that Blood Rain does more damage because it's a percentage of your heavy attack. Um, and then I say, okay, well, let's focus on one-handed melee weapons because we're going to kind of go all in on the machete here. So then that way, in an ideal scenario, the perfect scenario, you would find like a legendary machete. And then you could take advantage of all four of these. You're going to get the benefit of all four of these. Random aside that I want to add, I had one match while I was playing today where I was going to play Mia and somebody beat me to her. And that was like the only time it happened all day. And of course, in that match, a legendary machete dropped. I, did, I would have gotten a legendary machete on me and I didn't get the chance. We also got rocked. That game it was awful. <laughs> that game was terrible. Like the team was, I don't know. They were living in another world. That game is weird. Uh, but <clears throat> this is kind of what I had the most success with. I think that like, I think this game here that I'm about to play for you is an example of me using this build. I was using purple syringes for a lot of the match, which by the way, they're a lot like the hunting knife, so you gotta watch out, because this can happen, and then you can stun lock teammates with lights. Um, I wound up doing, I think, 111K damage in that match, which is pretty good. I, I think you could probably do even more if we had a little bit um, better luck with weapons, and I think that maybe if you're going for the uh, heavy attack build like this that you probably want to go for more um, of a slow weapon. But that's, again, something I haven't really tested yet. I haven't really gotten the chance. Um, the other thing that I tested because I had heard rumblings about it was going deeper into dismemberment as opposed to damage. Kind of coming over here because uh, balance bar got hit really hard. Um, there was a stealth buff to... Uh, demon units that increase their balance bar and then blunt force trauma. Oh boy. 
Look at what happened to the. Look how they massacred my boy. It was 15 and 30 percent, now nerfed to five and ten. Uh, seeing stars also got nerfed. I think it was what 25 percent at max, and now it's down to 15. So balance bar got nerfed really hard. I will say it's entirely possible, and I think it's even likely that balance bar is still king. <laughs> that even after the nerf, balance bar is still king. Because I went through and attempted to go all in on dismemberment. I think I, I, I got to remember what I did here, but I think what I did was I went all in on light attacks. So I was like, okay, I, I'll just, you know, I'll look for the machete. I'm going to go really hard on light attacks. And then I think my final point I put into like the last word. It's like, oh, if I'm going in on lights, I'm going to get the benefit of the last of the combo more often than I would if I only went with heavies. Um, but when I used this, at least against Plaguebringer, which is what I saw exclusively today, except for one Necromancer, which is weird. That was the game where I found the legendary machete <laughs> and we got stomped. Um, they, dismemberment didn't do anything. And I found a, uh, I believe it was either a blue or purple machete. So I, I had a good setup. So I had the faster attack speed. I had the increased dismemberment damage from Weapon Master. And then I was maxed out on my dismemberment in the skill tree. And I would just wail on possessed basics. And no matter, it seemed like no matter what I did, they'd always have one arm left. They'd always have one arm left at least to keep swinging with and keep landing attacks with. And I just, personal preference in my testing, dismemberment was not good i didn't really think it was i didn't notice a difference the only thing i really noticed is like oh my damage is lacking and what is the number one downfall of doing a dismemberment build it has zero impact on bosses and that especially against plague bringer i think that that's really brutal because you need to take down plague bringer fast because plague bringer is is rough if, if you let her stay on the field for too long and I will give credit to the heavy attack build that I was using previously. I was taking down bosses pretty quickly with it. And I think that maybe um, with further testing that perhaps the key here would be kind of something like this and maybe even being like, well, you know, uh, taking a couple points out of tankiness and just going in for damage because in well actually you wouldn't need to do that you could take one from here <clears throat> and then maybe keep that one there and just going for uh maxim maximizing your damage and basically trying to play mia as kind of like a warrior hunter <laughs> like she's gonna be your damage dealer is what i mean as opposed to doing what warriors normally do which is tanking and breaking balance bar and not caring so much about damage and kind of relying on your hunter to do that for you. She's going to be able to be your damage dealer. So I think there could be potential with this and relying on those big, slow two-handers like the axe, the sword, you know, all the best weapons in the game, basically. <laughs> all the best, best uh, melee weapons. So I think that there's some potential for this now. It's also entirely possible that you just go back to the same old boring snooze fest that we have done for months now, which is just the pure balance bar build and not really caring about uh, damage whatsoever. And basically just going for like pure tankiness. Um, there is maybe something to be said for this because you could be like, well, you know, maybe you don't need damage on her because she already gets damage from all of her abilities so you don't really need to invest in damage as much and you can be like all right well you know i'll put three points into reinforced amulet maybe i'll come over here and and put some points into seasoned survivor basic basic spam is still a huge thing and this is kind of the build that i run on my henry the red and then i would come down here and also maybe put three points into boss so now i'm super tanky um I have damage resistance on here and here. I've got full industrial strength. Like I'm full tank and then I'm full balance bar as well. Uh, stunning strikes down here. 
you can also invest in that if you want, especially because with her, you are going to be using a lot of heavy melee attacks because of Blood Rain. Um, so you could potentially say, all right, well, we're going to take points out of this and go over here and put all of our points in Stunning Strikes. You don't have to put three points to that. You could take these two and kind of do whatever you want with it. You could put it in here if you want a little more melee damage. Put it in here if you want to, you know, there's lots of things you could do. You could put it here, get a, you know, extra cooldown off of, on her ability. Um, so those last two points you can kind of do with whatever you'd like. Um, but she's okay. Uh, I've seen some people talk about like they, I've seen like Reddit saying, oh, she's a, instantly become the meta, instantly the best warrior. I don't think she's the best warrior, not even close. I think Henry the Red is still king. I think he's still number one by a distant margin, even after the, the cooldown nerf that he received. Um, right now, I would say she's the third best warrior. I think she's still better than Scotty. Um, in Ash's case, She's close with, with Warrior Ash. Um, I think Ash probably does some things better than she does, and she does damage better than he does, but I think Ash probably has a little more versatility. Um, being able to, you know, restore his shield bar is that you can ignore this build, by the way. <laughs> you can, his, his shield bar, being able to restore that is nice. It increases his tankiness, which as we've talked about is like, key on most warriors now he's got shield blast which is good for you know aoe and taking out multiple targets around him that's something mia does not have and then he's got the wisewoods potion which i mean it's just it's insanely good it has so much versatility it can heal him it reduces his fear and then if he wants to use it to try to take out bosses it gives him a damage increase and damage reduction and consider the fact that he gets a 30% damage increase when he pops this thing and 30% damage reduction. Whereas with Mia and her ability, her ability only gives her a 20% melee increase. And then to get more than that, she has to be, have like a lot of fear, which obviously, as we talked about, she doesn't have access to that when it matters most, which is in game. So, Ash does have access to that with his Wisdom's Potion, plus he gets that damage reduction. So if he wants to get in there and put himself between an enemy unit and the book, he's got the Wisdom's Potion to help him survive that. So that's really nice. So I think that overall, I would probably still put Warrior Ash above Mia. That's not to say Mia's like really bad or anything. I just don't think that she, there, she is definitely not meta or super OP like I've seen some people on Reddit saying. Um, she's okay. Uh, she does do a lot of damage. I think people get too interested in stat chasing. They see that she's putting up crazy damage numbers, which is great. Um, but that doesn't really mean much <laughs> in the grand scheme of like actually winning a match. It looks cool on the leaderboard. And I'll show, I'll show you over here uh, this match that we had. I did... I think 111,000 damage, something like that. So I'll show you over here. I did 114,000 damage, which is great. 91 kills, 114,000 damage. That's, that's sick, right? That's OP, but who won? But who won the match? The demon did. So <laughs> that tells you about all you need to know on that. Uh, so she's okay. She's not she's not amazing. She's not bad. She's just kind of somewhere in the middle of the pack. Um but again, we'll we'll do more testing with her. We'll see what we can do with her. But right now I say she's about average. Hey, if you let me know in the comments what you think about Mia. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who disagree. As always, let me know what you let me know what you think. Dis feel free to disagree with me as long as you keep it civil. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video, which is going to be a full breakdown of David Allen. So be sure to check that out tomorrow. But like I said, this is Sledge signing off. Thanks again for watching.